ऑनरेबल श्रीमती सागरिका घोष जी मे स्पीक इन बंगाली इन बिटवीन थैंक यू मिस्टर वाइस चेयरमैन ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ माई पार्टी ऑल इंडिया तृणमूल कांग्रेस I rise to speak on the sustainable harnessing and advancement of nuclear energy for transforming India bill 2025 the so called shanti bill so this bill brings neither shanti nor security it brings oshanti it brings bipod it bring brings khatra it brings grave danger this bill brings danger disguised as development cronyism disguised as reform surrender disguised as strategy this bill is not just flawed this bill is fundamentally dangerous sir let me be, be clear we are not debating whether india should pursue nuclear energy as my honorable as the honorable member before me said india has always pursued nuclear energy responsibly for decades india has always been a responsible nuclear state but as a country are we now prepared to abdicate our sovereign responsibility gamble with political safe with public safety and place one of the most sensitive sectors of the nation at the mercy of crony capitalism and government friendly oligarchs as well as foreign pressure so this bill is not reform it is recklessness this bill is not for the public it's for profit This bill is not about sovereignty it's about surrender the ruling party must also remember that you mr minister once accused the manmohan singh government of a sell out on the civil nuclear deal on the indo us civil nuclear deal today forget sell out you are rushing through this crucial bill without any parliamentary oversight simply because as your leader say ab ki baat trump sarkar that is why you are rushing through this bill so the government wants to produce 100 gigawatts of nuclear power capacity by 2047 under the viksit bharat program but the way it is trying to do this is the privatization in fact the oligarchization of nuclear power privatization can be benign if it is there's a level playing field if there are checks if it's open for all but in the name of privatization this government consistently promotes oligarchization rule of the oligarchs the shanti bill removes restrictions on private entry by allowing any company or person authorized by the central government to establish and operate a nuclear installation this is a huge policy shift as was pointed out and end seven decades of state exclusivity over nuclear power let's admit that the scale of investment needed for setting up such industry can only be undertaken by the high profile cronies of this government and the question arises is cronyism the reason why this government is paving the way for them why not go in for public private partnership instead and we all know sir who this government's favorite oligarchs are we all know that the hum do hamare do approach is what this government has adopted from the vision of the father of our nuclear program homi j bhabha to the resolve shown at both pokhran 1 and 2 india's nuclear program has always been deliberately kept under public control this is because nuclear power sir can be so deadly so deadly that the cost of failure is absolute one mistake one mistake can poison the land the water and lives for generations to come nuclear energy is not normal commercial activity sir it is not telecom it's not aviation it's not even defense manufacturing it is a strategic national asset asset bound up with national security and the risks are existential for humankind the risks are catastrophic should profit ma maximization and cost cutting be the aim of such a sector at the core of the bill is a highly diluted liability regime a reworked liability framework under chapter 3 which caps the maximum compensation for any new nu single nuclear incident with the operator's liability limited to installation specific ceilings set out in the second schedule so the doctrine of absolute liability held by the supreme court in the 1984 bhopal gas disaster is being limited 
The bill repeals the existing civil liability for nuclear damage, CLND Act of 2010, uprooting decades old legal protections around nuclear accidents, weakening accountability for suppliers. The liability cap, 300 million special drawing rights or SDR, a few hundred million US dollars or 3,900 crore is absurdly insufficient compared to the catastrophic cost of a major nuclear accident. As per the Shanti Bill, the sovereign top-up is discretionary in form and fund design, not automatic in comparison to what existed under the CLND Act. This means that beyond the limit of 3,900 crore, as per the second schedule, the government will be liable. And this is discretionary in function. The liability is discretionary. The clause is thus highly regressive as compensation beyond the given amount thus becomes optional, leaving communities and victims helpless. The citizen of India will be rendered helpless. Nuclear disasters take place on a vast scale, sir. In the 1986 Chernobyl catastrophe, the property damage was $7 billion, with 350,000 people resettled. In the Fukushima Daiichi disaster of 2011, the cleanup and compensation cost $180 billion, with 160,000 temporarily or permanently evacuated. So why this cap on liability, given the high urban population densities around sites like Tarapur and Karunkulam? The 2010 Act clearly defined the operator as a government or government company and allowed right of recourse, Section 15, against suppliers for defective components. The Shanti Bill redefines operators to include any company and allows liability transfer via contract, making supplier liability voluntary. The Shanti Bill shifts liability and recourse rules towards contract rather than statute. Meaning, suppliers can be insulated in the fine print of the contract and victims' ability to seek redress becomes uncertain. This is because contracts will be negotiated from an unequal bargaining position. It is terribly unfair to the victims, potential victims. Removing the provision of right of recourse is nothing but the anti-people playbook of the BJP. You are pro-oligarchy and anti-people. We have seen this play out in Bengal, where you have stopped Manrega and frozen funds amounting to 52,000 crore. What you want is people remember. should have no right of recourse. But Bengal Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee will always stand with the people of Bengal. That's exactly why we started the Kanya Shri scheme, paying 51 Honourable lakh member. beneficiaries from the state's own funds. Nuclear. But you only understand the language of profit, not the language of the people. Profit and nuclear safety cannot coexist, sir. One rewards cost-cutting, the other demands zero tolerance for error. These are irreconcilable philosophies. And the helpless Indian citizen will pay the, pay the price. Nuclear accidents are not imaginary fears. Chernobyl was not the result of mere technical failure. It was weak oversight and political pressure to prioritize output over safety. As a result, human lives were destroyed for generations. For generations, human lives were destroyed. Nuclear radiation does not negotiate. Nuclear radiation does not forgive. Nuclear radiation does not respect contracts and corporate liability clauses. We still remember the photo of the lifeless baby lying in the Bhopal mud. Shanti removes explicit acknowledgement of long-term radiation injury and allows the government to exempt facilities deemed insignificant risk. This is a violation, sir of the ILO Convention number 115 on radiation protection. The bill also reflects a blind and obsessive push for nuclear expansion without adequate debate on alternatives or consequences. India is blessed with solar, wind, hydro, and storage potential. A responsible energy transition demands balance, not fixation on the one source. Energy security cannot come at the cost of human security. When safety audits slow down profits, which one will be sacrificed, sir? Which one will be sacrificed? Safety audits or profits? When maintenance budgets threaten balance sheets, what will be cut? When emergency preparedness looks expensive, who will take responsibility? 
The global trend is to strengthen, not weaken safety norms. But this bill, Mr. Minister, is going in the opposite direction to what the global trend is. But the real shocker of the bill is this, sir. This sudden enthusiasm for opening India's nuclear sector coincides very conveniently with the intense foreign pressure, particularly from the United States, to allow private and foreign companies access to India's nuclear market. <laughs> Under the existing DPIIT FDI policy, private entities in atomic energy can attract up to 49% foreign investment. By removing the go government company only clause, the Shanti bill enables such FDI. This is startling. Will foreign entities now gain control over one of the most strategic resources of our country? Shame. Is India's nuclear law being rewritten to suit foreign commercial interests? Shame. Is parliament being asked to legalize what was politically promised abroad? Is national policy being shaped to please Washington rather than protect the citizens of India? Shame. This is a government of Moo Me Swadeshi, Dil Me Videshi. Moo Me Bolte Hai Atma Nirbhar Bharat, but the Dil is Videshi. We must again remember the slogan shouted with uh, great enthusiasm by the leader of this government, Ab Ki Baar Trump Sarkar. That is what their motto is, Ab Ki Baar Trump Sarkar. It is sad that this slogan, Ab Ki Baar Trump Sarkar, seems to have become a policy for this government. Shame. This is not the Shanti bill, sir. This is the T-R-U-M-P bill, the Trump bill, the Reactor Upgradation Management Program, T-R-U-M-P. This bill cannot be rushed through parliament. This bill requires discussion. It requires extensive inputs from stakeholders. It requires a long legislative process. It is a shame that the Prime Minister is not in the House when this crucial bill is being discussed. Citizens of India's lives are at stake. Existentially, humankind is at stake. Nuclear radiation is a possible fallout. How can this bill be passed? How can this bill be rushed through Parliament with four hours notice, with a four hour debate? It cannot happen, sir. This bill has to be thought about more. There have to be more discussions. There have to be greater consultations with stakeholders. Otherwise, the lives of citizens of India are at stake. The lives of helpless citizens of India are at stake. I want to point out to you one important uh, fact here, sir, that the, that, the nuclear, uh, that the nuclear installations that exist in our country are all in tribal areas, in the tribal regions. Nuclear mining, primarily for uranium, significantly, significantly impacts tribal regions, globally, notably in India's Jharkhand, in the Jarugoda area, where indigenous communities, Santhal, Munda, Ho, suffer severe health crises like cancers, deformities, and contaminated water from mining. Are we going to let these helpless, vulnerable communities be at the mercy of profit maximization of oligarchs? Is that what we are trying to do here? This bill cannot go through in this shoddy, rushed manner. It needs much greater deliberation, much greater discussion. I would urge the minister who is sitting here, please, please rethink. The lives of Indians are at stake. The lives of citizens are at stake. This bill must not go through in this form. We need greater discussion. Thank you, sir. Jai Hind. Bande Mataram. Joy Bangla. Thank you. Honorable.